Welcome to this week of Missouri Politics from the historic Daniel Boone home in St. Charles County. We are here with a guy that reminds me a lot of St. Charles County, the House Speaker Pro Tem John Weeman running for Senate. Welcome back to the show and thank you for the hospitality here in St. Charles County. You're welcome, Scott. It's great to be in this wonderful building, historic building here in St. Charles County. It's a, it's a great uh, asset to St. Charles County. The Daniel Boone lived a life and the county, this is a county property, right? Yes, Has sir. done an amazing job. You got to Google this and got to spend a day here. This is a tremendous asset for Missouri. Yeah, we're, we're very blessed to have this type of uh, historical asset here in St. Charles County. I've been out here many times. Actually, a, a great time to come out to this, this location is in Christmas time. They host a Christmas uh, uh, event where everyone's dressed up in period clothing. They have fireplace, and it's just it's a really neat uh, time to be out here. The so Daniel, Daniel Boone was a pioneer. He helped expand the West. We're not in your House district, but we are in your Senate district, correct? We, we You're are. You're expanding yourself. How's the campaign going? Campaign, I believe, is going very well. We've been working very hard, really, since last November. Mm -hmm. uh, our ground game is just, I think, superior, and I think that's going to demonstrate in the uh, in the final election tallies that uh, you know we've gotten to the people uh, at their doors. Uh, we're getting ready to do some other things uh, on the airwaves, but uh, those that will be coming here shortly. And uh, but I'm excited. We've got a lot of volunteers, a lot of uh, people that are reaching out to us to want to help out and, and, and contribute to our campaign. So I'm. I feel very good about where we're at right now. The old uh, old Senator Victor Callahan told me you could tell if somebody's been doing the doors, they'll be a little skinnier when you see them in the summer, they'll be a little more tan. You're a little darker, your jacket's a little looser, I guess you've been hitting the doors. What are folks telling you? You know what, it's interesting. Um, it, it depends on what's been in the news lately, but uh, certainly with the, the latest Roe v. Wade, um, mm -hmm. overturning of Roe v. Wade, We've been hearing a lot of um, people that are very happy that that happened, but also their concern is about uh, what's going to happen with uh, contraception. And, and of course, that's an area where I think in Missouri we're going to have to do some additional work to try to make sure we clarify what is and what isn't allowed. So um, speaking of Roe versus Wade, St. Charles County is a place I've thought of when you've elected Democrats or Republicans, a bastion of pro-life. What's been the response in your district? Oh, very much pro-life, as, as I am pro-life. I've been pro-life uh, since I've been in, actually since I was 17 years old. I actually have, have marched in Washington, D.C., the big, the big march back in 2014. It was, the, I think, the coldest day I can ever remember. I, I literally froze my feet to death. But, you know, it was awesome walking in a crowd with a, a million people um, up to, you know, the, the, the Capitol. And so, but... Pro-life is, is big in this area because we have a lot of Catholic and, and You're other... you an experienced guy in politics. Did you ever think the Supreme Court would actually issue that decision overturning Roe versus Wade? Well, I tell you what, I, I didn't think it was going to happen in my lifetime. Yeah. I really didn't. I, it, was, it was amazing that, that President Trump was able to appoint, mm -hmm. uh, was it two, two Supreme Court justices, which really turned the tide. And I think that's where a lot of us started to believe, hey, this could really happen. Let's talk about something that's making news here. So... If the state you have talked, you personally talk, when we talk on the television show, we talk about cutting taxes every time. The state made some efforts to uh, put taxes back. You actually here in your county has kind of taken that lead from you. Tell me what the county government's doing right now as we try to film this. Well, it's exciting news. It's going to be announced today. Uh, the, the county actually is going to be looking at taking steps to try to help um, forego the, the, the windfall that's going to happen uh, with the personal property tax. Because unfortunately, in our statutes, which we tried to fix this year, House Bill 2694, sponsored by uh, Representative Brad Hudson, was trying to fix that potential problem that we now are having with regards to the, um, the cost of used use vehicles. As we all know, um, with COVID and everything else, the, uh, the, the supply of new cars is down quite a bit and has caused the used car market to go up 20%. And so that means that's gonna get transferred to taxpayers. They're gonna to have to pay 20% more on their personal property tax. And so the county is going to try to um, forego that windfall and uh, put, let the, the taxpayers, keep, taxpayers keep that money. I mean, that really is a, talk about the states being laboratories for policy. Real, you know, the counties can be the same thing, especially these charter counties. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a pretty innovative move. And it, and it seems like the, County folks taking the lead from some of the state policymakers, and we're going to do what we can do to avoid getting your pocket anymore. Well, and that's an issue. Personal property tax has been an issue with me the past year or two. I've actually filed two pieces of legislation over the last two years. Uh, this year, I actually filed a personal property tax that was similar uh, bill that was similar to Senator Igles. 
we had a little disagreement about uh, the, the, the final details of that bill. You know, the devil's in the details, and I was more in favor of let's, let's eliminate the personal property tax, but we have to do it in a responsible way because if you completely eliminate it, all you're doing is shifting that tax burden over to real estate or you're going you're gonna to have to cut services. And that's well, where... Let's be realistic. Yeah. The governor vetoed it. He had some what seemed pretty logical reasons that was almost impossible to do just for one county. But you, you may see that bill again, right? I mean, if he can get that overrode in the Senate, it'll come back over to the House. And my assumption is if it makes it back, pretty good shot of passing. But it's kind of on him to get that back across the rotunda, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he's, he's had some difficulties with getting it across the, the, uh, the line. And I think uh, once I get in the Senate, I'll be able to help him do that because nice. I have some ideas on how we can make that happen. But it's really a two-part process because, one, it's in our Constitution. In order to get rid of the, completely eliminate the personal property tax, you have to remove it from the Constitution. And then the next step would be to find alternative revenue sources, which is the harder part, is trying to figure out how do you replace the revenue that you eliminate from the, the various taxing districts. It's one thing, you know, I, I've always been a Republican myself, but part of being a Republican is running things well. Mm -hmm. And if you do just cut that revenue source with no real way to, fit, to, to replace it, I, you know, the most conservative Republican, they want folks to have a school to go to. They want the old yellow dog to come pick their kids up and take them in. Right. I mean, you do have, there is some basic services government's gonna have to provide. And in, in the adult world, that costs money. Yeah. Well, we certainly want government to run more efficiency. That's always sure. been one of my things I've pushed for is, is transparency and more government efficiency. And there's always room for improvement within our, our local governments and state governments as far as, as, far as how they provide services mm -hmm. to Missourians. <clears throat> but I, I think asking them to take a 16 percent, at least in St. Charles County, it's a 16 percent tax cut uh, or revenue cut from their from their budget in one year. In one year yeah. That's pretty significant. So we have to make sure that we we find another way. The personal property tax is really an inefficient tax. It's not a really good tax. We're seeing the effects of it right now. You have a lot of problems with compliance and just, we need to find a better way of, of funding those taxing districts to versus trying to tax our vehicles and personal property. Let's talk about the special session. The governor came out. I, there's a couple people I thought about, you and the incoming speaker, Dean Plocker. For folks from the city, you two are probably the most welcoming to rule Missouri probably the folks that support things that probably help rule Missouri more than a lot of people in rural Missouri do. Right. Vetoing that mass, but a uh, uh, extension. I, and that's something you've supported. That's something a lot of folks that support you support. I mean, it was a, it was a gutsy move. Reminded me of something John Dutton off Yellowstone might have done. He said he was going to do it. I'll be honest with you. A lot of folks said he won't really do that. I, 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 you could have convinced me he wouldn't have done it. But boy, he did it. What's going to happen now? Well, I, I, we're certainly going to have a special session. We don't know when yet. I will tell you this. It can't happen. Where's until, your desk at right now? I was just going to say, it's not going to happen until the carpet gets laid down and the, and the desk get reinstalled. Because for, for the folks out there in, in Missouri, uh, the Missouri, Missouri House Chamber is completely empty right now. They, they're doing major renovation, which is due. We've, it's been 20 or 25 years since the last time we, we uh, did as any kind of As long as those works. renovations are going on, the public safe is what you're it, saying. <laughs> yes, they're definitely safer right now. We're not. We won't be able to go in session unless they want to have us meet in a uh, gymnasium somewhere yeah. in Jefferson City. But I will say, sometime probably uh, September, maybe October, I would suspect that we'll have a uh, special session. So let's talk. We'll talk about this in two parts. Uh, the ag bill first. Uh, my assumption is you can get a you can get a six year extension through the house. Yeah. In the Senate, absolutely. there's been some leveraging for some other priorities, but actually rule priorities. Um, the governor's taking a chance. How's, it, how's that part going to end? I think we'll come to a compromise. I know that was the problem. We sent over a six-year yeah. over from the House to the Senate, and then when it got to the Senate, of course, you know what happens in the Senate. They uh, start their little bickering and negotiating. And now they, careful, you'll be in the bickering I here know, in a few months. I you know. know. <laughs> I'm hoping to make it better. My plan is to make it better. Uh, but at this point, I, I, would, I think we have a good chance of, of moving that, that uh, sunset up to close to six years, maybe at six years. We're going to try. That's what we're going to look the, for. The other veto was a, a kind of a tax rebate. Um, and I think a lot of folks would have, uh, th would, we'll tell you privately, if they had a little more time, they could have probably crafted that a little tighter, a little better. Uh, I think the governor was concerned that people thought they were getting 500 bucks, and the Weeman household gets $204, and the Weeman household's a little ticked off. He don't, where's his $296? Right. So, I mean, I, I do think there was a, I, I think those were, I don't think that was a political decision. Those were some honest concerns. He came back and said, instead of doing this, this rebate, why don't we come back and do a permanent cut? It does seem more like the way John Weeman would approach something to come in and do a permanent cut for everybody. 
as opposed to the one-time thing. How's that went over within your caucus? Well, you know, we're disappointed. I know that we were wanting to do $1 billion. That was the original plan that we sent over to the Senate. Was would that, that have funded it fully? So everybody got 500 bucks? I think it would have okay. come pretty well, close. It would have come close than 500 it would have come million, close, right? yeah. But then they, you know, we had a $1.8 billion surplus of money that we had. We, we tried to spend money everywhere we could, $46 billion, and we had still $1.8 billion left over. And we felt like, you know what, why don't we give that money back to the taxpayers? Mm -hmm. And so when went to the House, or to the Senate, they they said no we don't want that and they lowered it down to 500 million and i think that's when it made this thing kind of not really as effective as it could have been but to the point of tax cuts i think it's admirable the governor wants to look at a more permanent solution because that's what we've been doing i've been doing that for eight years what can we do to reduce personal income tax i'd like to get it down to zero if possible but once again you got to do it in a responsible way people look at texas they have oil people look at florida you know florida has beaches and tourism Missouri has roads, and it's, it's really pulling teeth to fund those. But it's, it's, you have to, not like Texas doesn't fund schools and roads. They just do it with oil taxes, a lot of it. We don't have oil, yeah. unfortunately. But you're going to have to fund government some way. But, boy, it just seems like you could knock off some of those 0.1% um, that are, are in the accelerator now. You put them, speed them up. That seems like they could get done, right? Yeah, absolutely. Those are things that we can definitely do, and I'm excited the governor wants to help us put more permanent tax uh, reductions or tax cuts into into the law. And so I think this is a perfect opportunity for us in special session to do that. And we have the money now, so I think now's the time to to take advantage of that. And usually we're, we're, we're arguing over a couple hundred million dollars how we're going to spend it. This year has been a really unusual <laughs> year for us with having yeah. a lot of, I mean, we have the largest budget ever, $46 billion. When I started, it was $26 billion eight years ago. So it's it's doubled. And um, we, we've got to find ways to start looking at reducing, you know, how we spend our money because, you know, tough times are coming. Representative, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for hosting us here in St. Charles County. Thank you. We'll be right back. The judge, Mike Carter, is joining us from the Daniel Boone home in St. Charles County after this. For more than a century, the St. Louis Carpenters Union has shaped our communities. Through trusted alliances, we deliver skilled professional craftspeople while our business partners provide the kind of quality jobs that keep our economy humming. It's a blueprint that has worked since 1882. Turning Missouri into a right to work state stalls progress, wipes out jobs and kills momentum. Right to work is wrong for everyone. Let's keep Missouri moving forward. Visit carpdc.org to learn more. Your energy needs are changing. That's why at Ameren, Missouri, we're not waiting on the future. We're building it with the Smart Energy Plan, advancing thousands of projects across the state, helping reduce emissions through cleaner energy sources, boost reliability with self-healing equipment, and better withstand storms with new composite poles. Moving Missouri forward and bringing us all a little closer together. That's energy at work, Ameren, Missouri. I'm Steve Roberts, and I'm running for Congress against Cori Bush. Our country is spinning out of control. High gas prices grow, and children murdered in their schools. Now is the time to stand with President Biden, and I'll have his back, both in service and in Congress. I won't vote against the president just because I don't get everything I want. And together, we'll pass common sense gun laws and work to reform the police, not to fund them. I'm Steve Roberts, and I approve this message. I'm Eric Schmidt, and I think Joe Biden is a total disaster. That's why I'm taking my blowtorch to his socialist agenda. As your attorney general, I put a stop to Biden's open border policies. I sued to get rid of Fauci's COVID mandates, and I stood with President Trump to stop election fraud. In the Senate, I'll turn the heat up on the Biden Democrats. I approve this message because now's the time to take our country back. We thought it was over. Missouri Republican Governor Eric Greitens has just resigned this afternoon. Scandal after scandal. Already facing a felony charge, now accused of a second felony. Now, there's more about Eric Greitens. Former Missouri governor is now accused of spousal abuse and intimidation. One of the boys had a swollen face saying his father had hit him. Scandals, felony charges, physical abuse allegations. That's not conservative. But it is the real Eric Greitens. Show Me Values Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. Welcome back to Lincoln Missouri Politics from historic Daniel Buenholm in St. Charles County.
couldn't be a prettier spot in the whole county. And we're here with Fort St. Charles County, and we have a transplant from over in North County. Former Senator Tim Green, welcome back to the show, sir. Thank you. Wendy ha Houseman mm -hmm. from here in St. Charles. Now, what district are you running for in the House? 65. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you for the hospitality here in St. Charles. Thank you for coming. Judge Mike Carter. We don't have the cowboy today. We have the judge, though, <laughs> running for state senate. Here. Steve Elman, the county executive, the, uh, we're at the Pioneer Home, the pioneer of Republicans in Missouri. You were flipping seats when they didn't flip, right? Flipped that's, the seat in St. Charles. Got that's, right. that's correct. Uh, when I entered the Senate, we had nine Republicans, and 25 days after I left, we had the majority. Judge Carter, you're trying to go to the Senate. How's the campaign going? You know, it's going swimmingly, I would say. You know, just um, every day we get to the doors, and folks are ch sharing with us that they've seen us on TV, seen us on radio, <laughs> seen us in the mailbox. And, and uh, I don't know, if I had people chase us out with bottles of water, that's always a good sign. You know? Yeah. Well, you have like a Daniel Boone type district. You go all the way from the river, all the way up in Pike County and, uh, and Lincoln County, get Winsville. Then you go all the way down to Jeff City. You can see your district from the capital. Yeah. I mean, it's a sprawling area. It is. I think it's 100 miles wide, uh, east and west, and then 80 miles north and south, Pike down to the <laughs> bottom. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a mass media market. You know, there's just no way you're going to hit every door or, you know, that kind of thing. But... It's been a challenge, but uh, I got a lot of folks helping me, and it's made it a lot easier. Well, at least this is where you know where the capital is. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right, right. Uh, Steve Elman, tell me about the, the St. Charles County does produce probably the, uh, if you were picking counties, that a Republican needed to do well and to win a statewide race. I don't know where you'd start besides St. Charles County. Uh, the U.S. Senate race, one of the most inter entertaining races we've seen. You've, it's, been, it's been interesting to watch. You saw uh, uh, former Governor Greitens jump out to the lead. Now he's been hit. You saw Eric Schmidt jump up, and then he went back a little bit. Now you're kind of seeing Schmidt overtake him in a lot of these polls, and leading the way is in St. Charles County. Your poll last week, I think, had him at 28%. In St. Charles, yeah. In St. Charles County, had uh, Vicki Hartzler at 20, and, uh, or was it? Uh, that was Governor Greitens at 20. Greitens at 20, and, and Hartzler a little bit behind yeah. him. Yeah, so it's still uh, competitive, but uh, but looks like uh, Eric is uh, is ahead at least here in St. Charles County, which, as you said, has a lot of Republican votes in that primary coming up. And this would be somewhere that I mean, where Eric Smith's from, kind of the you know the the mid part of St. Louis County. There's a lot of similarities with St. Charles County and where he's from, and I've I've watched his message that it does hit pretty well in a place like St. Charles. Yeah, I think he's done well in the past when he's run here. I, I do think uh, uh, when he was in the Senate, he, uh, he, uh, he, he was very supportive of things that were going on here in St. Charles County, and I uh, think he will continue to be. Tim Green, you've watched a lot of these Senate races. I mean, this is, this is about as competitive and about as entertaining to watch as anything I've ever seen in, in a U.S. Senate primary. Where do you think it is right now? Well, I <clears throat> served with Eric Schmidt, so... Uh, mm -hmm. I kind of root for him a little bit from our personal uh, friendship, but I think it's up in the air. And I think there's a, even after you get out of the primary, I think the general election is going to be interested because now you see a independent coming in the race that uh, Senator Danforth is funding. So I think after the primary, I think there's going to be a lot, a Do lot you really more. think that he Well, can... if you remember in 1992, nobody gave Bill Clinton a chance. He won with 43% of the vote. Yeah, but Bill Bush Clinton got, was a scrapper. I mean, well, he didn't he, get life he, he, he received, Bush received 37% mm -hmm. and Perot received 20%. Put Perot and Bush together, you're at 56% and you're still at 43%. So but if you an can independent can bring. People, you have a, a wealthy, entitled leaders that whines all the time and Ross Perot, those are different people. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying there's more variables in the race than there were a year ago. We're going to have a, we're going to bet, bet on this. And, I'm, I'm, and I guarantee you I'm going to bet that Jack Danforth doesn't succeed and I'm going to win. Okay. It's not 1980 anymore. Uh, when you're knocking doors, right? Mm -hmm. People got to talk about this race. What, what are you hearing here in St. Charles? I'm hearing a lot of um, Eric Greitens. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, support him. And, you know, with all the controversy that follows him, you know, it's kind of scary. So it, I think I some know. folks have just decided. We don't. We either we don't care. We don't believe it. Yeah, and, that's, and I, that I is not so. a small amount of people. No, either you love them or you hate them. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and that might not work if you're trying to win a general election or a one-on-one -on -one primary. Right. But in a six-way primary with 18 people on the ballot, yeah, that, that, it, yeah, it might. You you're probably seeing folks. You get a wide breadth. I, I would assume your Winsville area. Uh, the Greitens supporters use the loudest guy, right? They, they I think so. But you get in that rural part of your district, that number of his supporters goes up, right? Yeah, we do. I've been doing kind of amateur polling, as you know, for yeah. five or six years, and I'd say it's pretty accurate. And so I do a lot of St. Charles County from, you know, the river to Forestell and then Forestell out to Jeff City, like mm -hmm. you were talking about. And 
Yeah, you can see exactly that. I've got Greitens ahead a little bit in St. Charles County proper, you might call it. But then as you move uh, rural, like you were saying, Greitens climbs five, ten yeah. points kind of thing, just like you it, I think would that's, I think that's replicated across the city. Now, I do think if you get over to Kansas City area, you're going to see Congresswoman Hartzer do better than you would in St. Charles County. She does have her own base, and it's, it's the other side of the state. So you might flip her for, for uh, Attorney General Schmidt, but I, I definitely think it is an exciting race to just watch. And if you're doing amateur polling, I mean, saving these polls and looking back on what the actual outcome is is going to be really interesting. Really interesting. And Hartzler, we can't, she doesn't register that much, you know, just out talking about here in our side of the state anyway. I would say if you're a big Hartzler supporter, you might not be that loud guy at the bar, the guy that writes on Facebook, all this stuff. That probably is more of a Greitens or a Schmidt person. The, the Hartzler person is probably a little bit more professional. Ben probably doesn't yell it as much, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's probably some truth to that. She's got nice signs. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Hafner will like hearing that. He's probably been in charge of those things getting up. <clears throat> Let's talk about St. Charles. I, when I think of why, you know, sometimes being a Republican anymore, you almost have to define it by what you're not instead of what you are for. Uh, Steve Elman, you've been a person that makes it very easy to be for things and be a Republican. Tell me about the changes in St. Charles County. Well, uh, 30, 40 years ago, we, we had a pretty strong two-party system. Yep. Uh, since 1980, with the Reagan Revolution, yep. there were a lot of uh, Reagan Democrats in St. Charles County that I think later started voting Republican, generally. Uh, we uh, we uh, uh, have increased our, our numbers. Uh, to the point now where uh, a lot of the, the battles are between Republicans, which is, which is good and bad. It, it so means it's just we, like in Jeff City. Just like in Jeff City. It means we, uh, <laughs> well, I look we, at a Ted house. We, we, mean, know I, that, I uh, we know that uh, just as in the city, uh, the, the important decisions are made in the Democratic primary. In St. Charles County, the, I think the important decisions on which direction the county is going to go are made in the Republican primary. There is uh, a lot of talk in the state capitol about what to do about property taxes. Uh, St. Charles County has come out with a pretty innovative uh, thing to take the county portion and cap it. Explain that to folks. Yeah, you know, we have a situation here where, uh, you know, and, and people get confused because, you know, we have a county assessor that assesses the tax and a collector who collects them. But actually, the county gets very little property tax. Every uh, political subdivision sets their own rate, and they set a rate uh, based upon the amount of money that, uh, that they are going to collect. Because of the pandemic, the cost of used cars has just skyrocketed. And the average car in St. Charles County has gone up 21% in value, which means you'll be paying 20% more if we keep our rates the same as they were last year for your car. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Elam has, has proposed a resolution, which we'll be voting on on Monday night, that basically says when we set these rates in August or September, after all the process is finished, we're going to go ahead and lower our rates so that we collect the same amount of property tax on the vehicles in this county this year as we did last year. It's just not fair, especially given the inflation problem, for these people to have to pay 21% more for an automobile just because the pandemic has created this shortage and the blue book value has gone and the other thing is we will be setting the county's rate, okay, and we will not be getting a the windfall. Water districts, but schools, fire schools yeah. cities, mm -hmm. fire districts, ambulance districts, everybody else will do what they feel is appropriate. Uh, and uh, we, we think a lot of people will be wanting to just forego that, uh, that exactly. windfall. Senator Green, uh, real quick, I want to thank the county executive. I have two used cars that I own in St. Charles <laughs> County. Heck yeah. You can buy that new couch now. You can call home day one. Uh, uh, there's been a migration of folks, I think it's pretty clear, that have done what you've done. They lived in North County, they live in St. Charles. However, you would think those folks voted Democrat in North County, St. Louis. Now that they're in St. Charles County, the numbers really don't show them voting much different than everybody else in St. Charles County. Well, in St. Charles County, as Steve was saying, the elections are in the primary. Yep. And if you want to participate in the election process, you need to participate in the primary election process. And so many times, primary votes, you're at 18 to 20 percent in general election votes. It's more turnout of anywhere from 48 to 52 percent. The people want to participate. They need to participate in the primaries. And pulling a Republican ballot and voting for the best candidate they think is of their interest is how their voice is heard. 
Wendy, you're, uh, you're knocking on doors. You've been involved. You've been very active in this community for a long time. It does seem like the more it grows, the more Republican it gets. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we're, we're, we're talking more and more about, you know, what are people concerned about? And anywhere they can get a tax cut or help them, mm -hmm. you know, pay their bills because their bills are costing, you know, higher and higher right now. And so I think it's, you know, any help we can get, I think is great. A little advice. Special session, the governor's called. Going to do a tax cut and ag. Uh, special sessions have a way of going sideways quick, don't they? Yes. You, you want to make sure the legislature is on board before you call the special session. I was involved in one special session, I believe, in 2010 or 11, where the legislature wasn't on board and the governor called the special session. It was certain legislators and nothing happened. It, it was, was just the, it was the poster child for a bad special session. Exactly. But I do want to make note and uh, uh, County Executive Bellman and I were talking, but there was a renovation for a veto session while I was serving in the Missouri House, did do uh, their business in the Senate chamber. Oh, really? I'm sure the Senate was thrilled with that. Uh, Steve, I mean, you've served in these things. Uh, give a little advice for uh, the folks that are serving. The special sessions have a way of uh, being very well laid plans and not working out. Except that, what is it, two years ago, uh, there, there wasn't a plan and uh, nothing, nothing ended up happening and okay. that's when they were looking at the the, the, the murders in the, 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 murders in the city very and vague in his press conference i think he came into this whole situation with a plan of what he wanted to do yeah that press conference he kept things very open for discussion now that's probably a wise move i hope that uh, the governor and the leadership in both houses gets together and has some sort of idea what they're trying to accomplish they may or may not do that but they ought to at least uh, try to get on the same page judge so carter if this goes the way of the china hub special session these issues are going to be there in january waiting for the two of you you get a tax cut through if you're there? Yeah, I would hope so. Anytime we talk about the words tax cut, you know, I'm looking for it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That's, uh, you're, you're in the house. This said doesn't get done. I mean, when you get there in January, you're ready to probably make this happen, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm looking to go, um, you know, this special session just to kind of learn yeah. and, and figure out, you know, everything that's going on. And so I want to make sure that I understand it completely going up there, having the head start. We're going to be booted off the air from the Daniel Bruno. We don't wrap it up. So Cinder Green, who won the week? I think Eric Schmidt did because we now know he knows how to light a blowtorch. He does. He does. He does. Who won the week? I'm going to say Eric Schmidt because um, I, I got to see him at the O'Fallon Parade yeah. this weekend. So um, I, It's I funny. Like he was in America on 4th of July. Who would have thought? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who won the week? Yeah, everybody stole mine. I'd say Schmidt. You know, uh, Greitens is kind of softening in the polls a little bit. And uh, my brother's about six, four, five, and we had a little meeting with Schmidt uh, four or five days ago, and he's still taller than my six foot four brother. <laughs> he's, no, he's not going to love him anything more than that. Steve Elman, who won the week? I think the winners this week were all of the uh, uh, potential uh, officials and all the candidates who walked in the 4th of July parade, including myself. Boy, yeah. It was a hot one. It was. And uh, everybody that uh, showed up uh, should be uh, should be a. You can spot a born loser in politics if they ride in the car during the parade. You know, yeah. you could just chart that down. <laughs> I like hearing that. I'm going to say Governor <laughs> Parson. <laughs> Governor Parson threw the gauntlet down during session. He said, "If you don't give me a six-year extension on my I'm going to veto it." Most folks, I think you could convince me he wasn't really going to veto it. Old guy stepped up and vetoed it and threw the hammer down. I'd say he won the week. Well, you'll win the week next week by joining us. We're going to have our fourth district congressional debate from uh, University of Central Missouri campus in Warrensburg. Join us for that next week on This Week in Missouri Politics. Support for this program has been provided by the Missouri Automobile Dealers Association, Ameren, Spire, and Sterling Bank.